Hello, my name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. We're here at the 2019 edition of the International Society for Magnetic Residence in Medicine meeting. So the topic of this morning's presentations was machine learning and MRI, and we're happy to have one of uh, today's speakers, Dr. Uh, Zhang Chulye from uh, Keist University in uh, Korea. Dr. Uh, Ye, thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you, Matt. So your focus specifically this morning was on the use of machine learning techniques in uh, data reconstruction for MRI, and there's really a lot of potential there. Can you kind of talk to us a little bit about what you discussed? Yes. Yeah, actually, deep learning has been mostly used for the diagnosis and image analysis, but recently, we start to see, people start to see that deep learning has a significant potential for generating images. For example, in the MRI cases, most uh, important issue in the image generation is the, this is a relatively slow modality. For each patient, you need to take to spend at least like 30 minutes or one hour for the schedule of the scan. But if you actually increase the scan time or throughput, then you can actually increase the revenue. And also you can do, by increasing temporal resolution, you can do all kinds of exciting study for the cardiac and brain and etc. right? But in order to do that, you need to have a very fancy algorithm. And now people realize that the neural network itself can generate the images with a very small number of data. And by doing that, then you can actually have a better reconstruction with a te high temporal resolution. And then in this morning's talk, actually, I review some of the recent activity in this area. And also, our, not only for those reconstruction, and also we can actually utilize those deep neural network architectures to do the image generation, especially in the MR cases, there are a lot of different kinds of contrasts. Sometimes, some of the contrasts are missing, but in that case, radiomic analysis is a little bit difficult. But by using the neural network and the construction techniques from the neural network, we can also generate images by utilizing the available data. Optimally uh, utilize available data, you can generate the accurate images and then can help with the uh, radiomic analysis. Mm -hmm. That's another area. And compared to like a diagnosis and all the, or, uh, or like uh, other areas which is not being investigated in neural networks, these kinds of image processing and the image reconstruction is a very, very actually uh, promising area from industry point of view because actually this is more like uh, uh, improving the temporal resolution and spatial resolution and then the decision is still made by the doctor. Mm -hmm. In the previous deep neural network usually deep neural network try to replace the decision of the doctors, but there is some kind of like a barrier to make this kind of concept working in the real practice. But here, we are by improving the resolution of the images using neural network, still doctor can make, uh, make a decision, but has a better accuracy. So, so this is really an interesting um, application of machine learning because right. it's something that could be running in the background without the radiologist ever even knowing it's happening. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And also, recently I heard that FDA has a different kind of trap for this kind of software. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be, uh, for example, Dionysus software need a very uh, top like a procedure, but this is just image processing tools, fancy image processing with a smart uh, intelligent algorithms. Then mm -hmm. in that case, it's more easy to get to the market in all the time periods. Yeah. Then, yeah, this can be easily adopted in the, uh, in the market. Now, how far away are we from seeing some of these tools become used uh, routinely? Well, I think I know that most of the companies right now, for Siemens, GE, and Philips, and even Canon, actually, I know they are working on this deep learning technique for the image reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And I saw some of their demos as well in these conferences. So I believe that those kinds of products will be available uh, in a short time period. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll look forward to, to seeing some of that. Yeah. Anything else from this morning's session that you'd like to share? Yeah. So actually, deep learning itself, yeah, it usually consider it as a black box. And, but in our listen works, and then we try to understand much going on inside because that's very important from a clinical perspective. Because if we, even though we generate the good images, if we don't know what's going on inside, then clinician doesn't believe it, right? Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that we do not create any kind of artificial features. We want to actually generate accurate images from the data we can extract. But our listen analysis from mathematical analysis, what it's showing is actually this kind of deep neural network is not kind of magic black box, but it's like a, uh, it's like a uh, uh, advanced version of the signal processing routine which is routinely used in the 
uh, uh, previous classical approaches, but more like a sophisticated approaches. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, we are more comfortable of using this machine learning algorithm, and we don't need to worry too much about uh, the black box nature of the neural network. Very good. Still, it's going on, but I think it is. It's, I think the future is quite bright. Good, good. We'll uh, we'll look forward to seeing all that. Well, okay. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Yeah. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Signing off from ISMRM. My name is Brian Casey.